Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Podkit. Episode 11. Womp womp. This is Podkit, episode 11, Violating Simver, on Sunday, September 20th, 2015. And now, peace, not war. This episode of Podkit is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. This episode also has show notes at thenexus.tv slash pk11. Yes, this is the real episode 11. It's not like episode 10.1 or anything. It's it's not Fringe Kit. Yeah. Pop Kit X 10.11. Exactly. This is the real 11. <laughs> yeah. I think I think we've got a title already though. <laughs> Sounds good. So, what's new this week? Uh, iOS 9 is new this week. Newish? Yes, it is. Yeah, vaguely new. It's so like half week old, guys. Come on. It's okay, old news. so so tell me about this new iOS nine thing. The thing that really is. So you're telling me that you all were able to update to this thing, and you didn't suddenly run out of space seconds before the update happened. You betcha. Huh. I have a. I, think I was I just 30, fine. I have a 32 gig 5s, and I've got a 64 gig um, iPad. So both of them were a okay. I actually upgraded my phone over Wi-Fi because I'm a horrible person. Ooh. And I like to watch the world burn. <laughs> I guess so. Or at least your iPhone. Yeah, that, that too. That too. Um, but it's it's really fun. I'm loving the new font. On the iPad, the, the split screen kind of multitasking stuff is to die for. Like oh, you, have uh, the, you have the Air 2, right? So you can actually run both at once. Yeah. You betcha. Nice. It's way cool. I can't wait until um, more apps support it. I think Twitterific uh, is, is the one that I'm really enjoying right now. Slack will also do it. Um, but otherwise, everything else is like, uh, so there are like two levels of the multitasking thing, right? The first one is you just pull it over and this little like sidebar app takes over the whole screen, um, even though it only uses like the one quarter slice. Um, the the rest of the app is grayed out kind of in the background, almost like it were, it was like an overlay or a modal. Hmm. Um, and then you can just use that little part for a, for a section of it. It's basically like an elongated iPhone view. And then uh, when you're done, you can swipe it back over and uh, you'll go back to the main app. But then there's another setting where you can pull it all the way to the middle. So pull in from the from the right on a left to right um, localed iPad. Um, and when you pull it all the way over, it'll actually literally split screen it. So two apps running in parallel and you can swap between them pretty seamlessly. That sounds pretty fancy. It's absolutely brilliant. I know, I know like the the surface folks are like we've been able to do that since 1982 um yeah on windows on windows right (laughs) um but i um i really 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 like it for the ios paradigm it's been great for like notes taking notes in class i'm sure Um, it's been great for doing everything it's it's been pretty much yeah universally have you tried doing the um like uh, little window video viewing thing I have not tried that. See, I just recently recognized that that was an option. So I think that's I, really cool. Yeah, like I don't watch enough videos in at, from my iPad as like a, um, I, I don't watch them very much as like a, a long term thing. I'll usually mm-hmm. like sit down and and full screen it if I really want to watch like I don't know Netflix or even like YouTube stuff. Um, but I could see how it would definitely be useful. Oh, imagine um, you <clears throat> imagine you were doing something like in uh, Coda or something, for example, and you were watching like a person do kind of like a demo or tutorial. Yeah, that's right. Like lynda.com is what I'm thinking oh, of. Oh, yeah, now. Linda. That, exactly. I would now that, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm, I'm making a note of that because I don't want to forget how to do that. <laughs> like that's. <laughs> Because I I never thought of that before, but that's exactly what I need it for. Because what I've done in the past all the time is put on the audio mm-hmm. and then just ignore the video entirely. Yeah. And, I mean, the video is going to be small, but I mean, at least it's going to be there. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I had no, I had not put two and two together there. That's awesome. I don't even have this iOS nine thing. I really want it, but I don't have it. Someday, someday. So I didn't I didn't hear that whole conversation, but um, I I think my iPad can do the video thing too. I'm trying to find it, then I realize I don't have... I need to go to Safari or something, because I use ProTube instead of the YouTube app. Oh. And it doesn't support support the video thing yet, so... 
So ProTube is just like a third-party YouTube client? Yeah, it's written by this guy named Jonas Gessner. Gessner. He's a German guy. It was first a jailbreak tweak, still is, that was just the YouTube web view wrapped in an app form. Then nice. a few more features that you can download for offline and things like that. And that's still available on Cydia. Um, but there's also an App Store version now that is its own separate app. And I like it. It just It's away from Google Bloat, and it's just a nice third party. It looks pretty nice. It's got mm-hmm. a cool icon, too. Brilliant. Check it, check it out. I think it's a couple dollars in the App Store. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. I'm definitely going to bookmark that. So let's see. I'm trying I... to find a super short video. Got to demo this, the video thing. Yeah, go for it. You just hit home, right? So if you're playing, you hit home. Okay, no, that didn't work. Do you have to full screen it? I don't don't know how it works. There's like a little tiny button that's that's next to the full screen one that should trigger um, picture in picture. I'm going to grab my iPad too so I can see if I can get this to work. And I'll screenshot it. Of course. Okay, cool. Of course, the YouTube mobile has its own video interface, so I can't full screen it. I don't know. I, it looked like my iPad said it could do it, but I don't have an app that easily does it. Maybe I'll just happen to see it accidentally in like a month or two, and then it'll be cool, and I'll tweet about it. Totally. So I'm on the I'm on the YouTube uh, I'm on the YouTube like web page right now. So the the web version of it. Um, yeah. I'm gonna see if I can track down. I'm just gonna open like a random Jonathan Mann video because because why not? Um, cool. And then it looks like my only option is to full screen it then because of the way that YouTube YouTubes. Um, but there's another one that I want to yes. see. I think Panic has some just regular old HTML videos. So Panic, um, and there's was Apple to iPad. Did you guys ever see that video? The um, the one where they did like a music video um, that was they loaded a program from the iPad to an Apple II and um, it's apparently a really fun retro thing. Okay. Mm, yeah, so, so I've got it. It's really cool. I'll show you. But I've got it here, and I actually do have it. Um, oh, I figured it out. Vimeo supports it. But yeah, a, a native a native video player kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can stretch then, it out in size, too. And you can kind of drag it around, and it's all funky. That's way cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. Okay, I'm gonna. I just put a p- couple screenshots in there. I'm gonna put them in the Slack so we can eventually get them wherever we need to get them. But yeah, it's it's way slick. I just this is the first time I've ever done it, but it looks way cool. Yeah, me too. It seemed a little laggy on my iPad Mini too, but mm-hmm. it is a two-year-old device with a slightly underclocked CPU relative to the iPad. So yeah, that's like understandable, I guess. I think it's the oldest iPad that supports it too. Uh huh. I mean, yeah, I, I so sense. desperately wish Android could just let me do that little video thing. It would change my life. Well, they'll probably add it soon enough. I don't think I don't, I don't think it's in Google's best interest to add that, but maybe. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's it's interesting to me that YouTube seems to be like objecting to it too. I, well, objecting might not be the right word, but YouTube has some sort of a. Um, YouTube doesn't support it yet on iOS, so... I mean, even YouTube was... uh, They told everybody, like, a year ago that, oh, you know, you're going to get offline support in a few weeks. Never happened. Ever. So, in Africa, you can download offline a 144p video. Can't do that here. Just just Africa. So, I don't know if it's a Google thing or if it's a YouTube thing, but something goes on there. Yeah, it seems like there'd be some copyright folks who would be like mm, how about they probably about can't do it panels? in the US or have yeah. it be very public in the US because then they'll just get crap from the yeah. uh, Hollywood industry RIA and stuff and exactly MPA. every A all, all, all of RIA MPA but my iOS 9 update experience I went through iTunes I did the update thing but my iPhone 6 I just hit update and it was fine my iPhone 5 was still broken, and I did the – there's a tweak called Impactor that will restore your iPhone and DGL break it on the go. So I did that to 8.4.1 the day before, and then updated it. And then my iPad I just restored, then restored from backup, and that updated to iOS 9. So a few different ways for everything. Nice. I've only Wi-Fi updated, uh, I think, to iOS 8.4.1 on my iPhone 6. Mm-hmm. And otherwise – 
early like iOS six days probably with my iPhone five because otherwise I've pretty much been jailbreaking, jailbroken. So I have to restore for every update. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm kind of going away from that now. It's too much of a hassle, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun, but not if you want stability and a nice, robust experience. Stability? What's that about? You don't need that. Stability is for people who like things that work. Yeah. We, we, we're all bleeding edge. You know, nightly builds as our main device on our main devices and everything. Are you still running that, Ryan? You had nightly Cyanogen mod, um, didn't you? I do have that on the Moto G. It is not charged right now, but it uh, it did it, it worked. Hasn't, nice. Hasn't crashed beyond repair yet. No, not at all. In fact, it um, has gotten numerous updates, and it has not had any problem doing it. Um, it's it's the process is really cool. Uh, on on in the in the Android part of the OS, it'll say, "Oh, you've got an update," and then if you accept it, it will restart, boot into the bootloader thingamajig. And then boot into this fake operating system thingamajig that can replace the system image, and then nice. and then and it does it all, it wipes the caches, and then you boot back into Android. The caches are rebuilt, and then you're good to go. That's awesome. Now it does nice. take like 25 minutes to do on this little wimpy Moto G because you know uh, it has no processor po- power, but mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah, that's way awesome. Do it, so. I, I also have the um, Nexus 5 running, the third Android M preview build. Um, I don't know. It uh, doesn't look any different, really. Look, pretty much does everything the same. Nice. You know, in- incremental update, even though we're jumping from 5.1 to 6. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Semver, who needs it? Nobody, <laughs> apparently. I, yeah, we could... I think uh, if... If if next week uh ne- next week we have another Semver uh Semver reference, I think we can safely rename Podkit to Semver Who Needs It. Um because I think <laughs> our our our, our cur- prospective title for this episode is also violating Semver. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Semver kit. Um <laughs> but the um yeah, I remember I remember I used to have a droid incredible. Um I since have, have lent that out to incredible. Too. To a friend of mine who was a droid, droid, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I ran Cyanogen Nightly on it for a while. However, the do, trick do was. Do you remember that... which number? So it was the one that was based off of um, two point three Froyo. Because... Okay, so that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was when it EOL'd. But there was like a there was a bootloader for it that seemed to do the exact same thing, except it was way more primitive because Android two point three. Mm-hmm. Um, was it Clockwork? Or is Clockwork different? Yeah, Clockwork mod is the bootloader thing. Yeah. Yeah. But then there's like a, a second, there's like a subset of that that it went into to update, but I don't yeah, recall what it's exactly. called. Exactly, yeah. I don't, yeah. I, it, all of that ROM stuff is kind of beyond me. Not yeah. because it's hard, but because if you do it wrong, you don't have a phone anymore. Yeah, and that, and was, always, that was always a scary thing for me, so I didn't do that until I... Hit another uh, one. Until I switched to, yeah... Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it, too. That's why I've done it on every phone but the Nexus 6. So uh, last, or the summer of 2014, when I was working in Morris doing wireless internet service provider stuff, I had my iPhone 5, which is my newest one at the time, but it was jailbroken, and I had some, it had just gotten to a new jailbreak, and it was an issue where if it was booting up when it was in the dark, it wouldn't boot up and it would boot loop. How somehow like, the jailbreak was tied to the ambient light sensor. That is so and, cool. That's fascinatingly awesome. And so, well, I thought at least I, that was that was a bug in the jailbreak, and that seemed to fix it at one point. It but could then have been a, a feature. Or later, <laughs> Dark boot. I don't know. I was updating or something. Either way, I couldn't get my phone my phone to boot, and it was just boot looting boot looping her off but and of course this was a day where i had, like drove an hour to go somewhere and like having a phone would have been really nice but yeah. oh gosh there it was stuck without mm-hmm. a phone mm-hmm. that's tough so, so like did it go out of the boot loop once you uh once you were like in light again or would it just be stuck in a boot loop no, until you... it, it might have been i know i ended up having to restore it but oh gosh i don't remember i think there was a point that where yeah, i had it in the light and it would perform a lot better like it, it would boot or I don't really remember. I don't even know what version of iOS. That must have been 
one or something. I don't know. Nice. Nice, yeah. Uh seven point one. <laughs> no, it was eight it was eight it was eight point oh point one that was the the really fun one, right? That was the one where everyone's phones were being bricked after updates. Yeah, and they they pulled it after forty minutes or something. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing on Twitter and looking for the update that said there's no update available. I'm like, what's going on? And then I kept scrolling and oh okay. Oh, they broke it. Yeah, you know, it happens. So you have bad updates. Where's Watch OS two? Oh, that is a good point. Where is that? That is a good point. It's missing apparently. What, what do you think the someone, super bad bug was? I saw a tweet or two of someone claiming they found the bug. I don't remember what it might have been something with fair play mm. and not being able to do something with, with some DRM. I don't really remember. Yeah, somebody had mentioned that it was some off thing about um, the the App Store, hmm. um, but I I don't recall much more past that. I mean, imagine if it was like some code signing thing, like oh, any app can go on there. Have fun with that. That would have been would bad. Be, that would be a party, and that sounds about right. Yeah, it'd be like a it jailbroken kind of got, watch. Yeah, cool. Except there's no easy way to restore it, except take it to an apples and 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 apples. Welcome back to the show. Uh, did you know that Linux has no drivers? I, I had no idea. Oh, man. Did we lose the recording? Oh, no. The recording is on my computer. Uh, the recording is over. No, it's completely fine. Oh, sweet. So we have full documentation of everything that oh, happened. You nice. will, when you listen to this later, you will hear Brian saying, and apples and apples and apples and apples and apples and apples and apples, and apples, and apples just over and over again. Oh, my God. That's, that's, that's amazing. I can't wait. I, I think I'm going to propose that for a title. Okay, go ahead. Oh, already done. Oh, Who was that? That's, that was you. Oh. Oh. It was me. Oh, it's so funny. Mm. Well, that was awesome. Or something. Yeah, something. <laughs> so I guess we shouldn't talk about Linux not having drivers, because when you do, um, it breaks. Yeah, the go- the ghost of Linus Torvalds comes through, comes through the wires and will you know, kill SSH for you. Well, I was thinking it was the Revenge of the Shuttleworths, but maybe. Revenge of the Shuttleworths, maybe that that, that actually sounds better. We'll, yeah. we'll go with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So do you want to talk about this um, strange new Amazon thing? They've, they've been doing so many weird things recently. Uh, well, at least two. Um, and or maybe I'm, even seven. Maybe even seven. Like, I don't even... I don't, I don't know what their strategy is. I mean... They they've added new stuff to the Fire TV lineup, and it's you know as as the show notes illustrate, it seems like it's a it's a gaming type thing. So they give you a controller and stuff. Well, um, so what I want to point out here is, so if you click that link, yeah. you'll get to the Amazon Fire TV Gaming Edition. Yeah. So there are three models of the Fire TV. There's the Fire TV Stick. So you just plug mm-hmm. it into your HDMI port. It's sort of like a Chromecast. It mm-hmm. comes with remote. I don't really think you can play a whole lot of games with that particular model, but I'm sure you can play, you know, Angry yeah. Birds. I mean, what doesn't? At least a couple of things. What doesn't play Angry Birds? I think a toaster can even do that now. <laughs> yeah. To to it's aim the bird, toaster. you just lower the toaster level down, and then to <laughs> shoot it, you let it go back up. <laughs> yep. So then you have the middle version, which is uh, the just the Fire TV, mm-hmm. and then you have the better version, the Fire TV Gaming Edition. And uh, the pricing is pretty reasonable, $40, $100, and $140. Yeah, that seems to make sense. And now, I think it's... I I wonder... We we won't ever get a breakdown of which one sells here, but I wonder if people will always just buy the gaming one. It's almost too bad they have the middle one, though. If they didn't have the one without the controller, people would buy the one with the controller, and then games would actually exist. It's sort of the same problem that's going to happen with the new Apple TV. Who's going to make games for it? When there's no controller bundled with it, I clearly am. I'm gonna make that uh, that uh, Apple TV remote version of Flappy Bird. Remember? Yeah, but you don't need a controller <laughs> for that. That's true. That's true. Well, I think at the same time, it's it's a good the middle device. It's gonna be for people who want a remote, but they're not gonna game, so they don't need the they see the controller and like, oh, that's for for kids who yeah. But just then what? But then the Fire Stick mm-hmm. comes with a remote too. Yeah. yeah well, that's it's true. three different but does the kinds fire- of remote. Does the, the the Fire TV supports 4K? Does the stick do as does does that as well? I'm or? guessing it doesn't, but I'm don't I'm guessing also people who care about content on Amazon don't care about 4K because there probably isn't. Yeah, yeah. Um, you like can get the 
Yeah, I don't think so. And you can get the Fire TV stick with the voice remote, which is what they call the one in the middle one. Yeah. Versus the standard, which is in the forty dollar one. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you're right. Look at that. Okay, so it's fifty dollars to hundred. Okay, so that's not, still not bad. Yeah, I, but I, it's kind of like the flatter remote better. Yeah. Right. It's it just looks like it's weird, weirdly segmented. Like all of Amazon's Fire products seem very weirdly segmented. Oh I mean, well, you want to talk about segmentation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, i mean let's go look at their tablet lineup right oh um, i don't even know how to how read many kindles it. do they have i that is a, well I, I don't even know so we've so got they're... here the newest one which is just fire okay <laughs> i mean literally that is the name of this product it's 49 dollars. it's just fire yeah it's but look I... at the specs of this thing it's awful it's really it's it's like Walgreens tablet level like. exactly like that. <sighs> yeah, oh, seven hours yeah. of battery life though. So so allegedly seven. Oh, well, I mean it should have How seven. How was that CPU? They're not making a single penny on this, are they? It's probably old inventory. I mean, it's, I, it's not their inventory at the at the very most because they never released a tablet this terrible. I think. Yeah. Um. So for those not reading it here, it is. Uh, 171 PPI, 1024 by 600, which means a normal web page wouldn't probably even be able to display right because most web pages are for 1080p now. It is an IPS display though, so it's not that horrible, doesn't horrible. mean anything. It's 170. True, true. I, yeah, it's not Retina, and it's pretty small. Yeah. Um, eight gigs of internal storage, but you can do SD cards, so I guess that's fine. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's uh. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool that you can get a tablet for a kid or something, but then you're locked into this crappy Amazon store, and I don't know if they care. Yeah. Well, and it's just fascinating, too, that they that they say, like, right under the, the buy button, basically, it says, make it a six-pack, buy five, and get one free. <laughs> now, that like, is pretty cool. <laughs> like, I, mean, I, I, I just, I can't even fathom that phrase. I mean sure you know get six of them and you're you're only paying 250 bucks for for six tablets okay well so for for cool. perspective i could get one new moto 360 or mm-hmm. six of these yeah right <laughs> i could tape one to each limb on my body <laughs> yeah you could it, yeah it seems like uh yeah that might be that might be the best use you can find for this because turning it on certainly won't be uh super helpful no so okay. then, then, there's, then they have all the other Fire ones. Fire HD six, which is uh-huh. different, apparently. They're all new, aren't they? No, the Fire HD six. I think the ones that have the word "new" next to them are have yeah, been updated. I, yeah. Um. So, so what's new about? Okay, that one's not new. So HD Fire HD eight. That's colorful. Yeah, oh yeah, they added colors to this one. Um. The resolution wow, is only like, slightly better. Yeah. Um, it's the same as the six, but it's uh lower PPI. Yeah. Then they have the uh-huh. new Fire HD 10, uh-huh. which is a um, bigger one. Which has the same resolution as the 8 and the 6. Just a larger screen. Yes. So Man, that resolution is so worse. bad. Yeah. Great. It's not even funny. Wow. Well, they're charging $50, $100, 150 and 230 So they're not making they, – they don't – they can't afford to put anything in them. And then there's the kids' edition for 100 It's a big <laughs> blue bumper. This totally looks like it's almost like a white label one of the versions that they sell at Target. Yeah. And the bumper thing yeah, is pretty cool, especially for kids. And they'll replace it because it has that, that guarantee thing. So it's almost like you're buying two of the $49 ones up front because mm-hmm. they know you're going to replace it. <laughs> yeah, that's... yeah. In one of their demo photos, they have paint all over the screen. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Huh. None, none of these is even close to being appealing to me but i guess it might they might sell a couple dozen so i mean the 49 dollar one see i could get that for my grandmother because she needs you know she doesn't need something super great she just wants to be able to go to facebook she just wants to be able to go to check her email oh wait wait she uses gmail she won't be able to do that oh wow. so much for that oh well <sighs> so like in, in the context of what's even like been going on at their hardware lab right now, it kind of seems like this, it's 
there's interesting things we can kind of read there. I don't know if you guys heard, but about um, about a month ago, uh, there were some layoffs at Lab 126, which is the the Amazon kind of skunk works um, thing. The people who made the Kindle among mm-hmm. you know all the fire stuff. Um, so it, it's it doesn't seem like this whole fire thing is working out terribly well for them, especially with the fire phone now out of the picture and this weirdly ridiculous and not really appealing slate of ha- slate ding uh, of tablets uh-huh. and, uh, and TV devices. It's just like really puzzling, I guess. Well, so I think um, if you look at the fire phones, anti-success, I think they call that failure by the way. Um, <laughs> the, it it flopped so hard that maybe they're all just reeling from it. That um, maybe we did it wrong, and it's so wrong that they just couldn't recover from it correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you look at the um, screenshots for the the new tablets, they show Fire OS five, which mm-hmm. looks remarkably similar to standard stock Android. You know, it has the launcher screen, all your oh, apps. Definitely. Um, so maybe they are going closer to normal Android and maybe one day they'll just stop trying to be a device company and just go back to being buy stuff from here company. Yeah. That would be, I think a smart move for them because they're really good at getting stuff to my house. Yeah. (laughs) They're very good at that stuff that you want at your house. I know. Unlike the tablets. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. They're they're good disposable shields. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're third um yeah, what is it? Body armor. Wasn't there somebody who did you, like a you could buy a six pack and then you just have like you just put it in a jacket and you bulletproof, you know? Yeah. Basically. Cheap, cheapest bulletproof vest ever. <laughs> I mean or you could buy the six pack and, and you can get an iPad mini. Mm-hmm. And then if somebody's trying to mug you, just give them your fire and then they'll be They'll be happy that they got something, and you'll be happy that you still have an iPad. Decoy tablets. Exactly. Oh, that's the best. So do you want to talk about this uh, Marco thing? Oh, yeah, you bet. So Marco Arment, uh, Creator hyper of Instapaper. Celebrity, yeah, hyper-celebrity Instapaper dude who invented, kind of sort of invented Tumblr by taking in the inputs of some dude's thoughts and putting them in PHP. So in short, yes, it was PHP. That, that's all you need to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in short, Marco's a cool person, and he's made cool things. And a couple of interesting things are in the news for him right now. I don't know a whole lot about Instapaper Seven. Um, it just looks nice. It looks really. It looks really nice. I haven't used Instapaper in a long time since Marco owned it. I think. Yeah. Um, but the Black Pixel, um, which is the, the company that took it on after after Marco did, I think, has seems to have been doing a really good job, kind of expanding it in ways that I don't think Marco ever would have kind of let it. Which you know, article thumbnails, for example. Yeah. Um, but it's it looks really nice and really pleasant to use, and I'm actually kind of considering hopping back on the Instapaper bandwagon now. Yeah, what I thought was kind of funny was, uh, you know, Instapaper uh, is basically a reading later app, and when I read about, or he tweeted it, uh, or linked it from his blog, I think, and he says, oh, it looks really good, and I got here and I saw the pictures, it's like, it's text on a white background with some pictures, I've seen it before, it doesn't look that different. But it looks nice. I mean, I'm just saying that it's not revolutionary. I yeah, it looks it looks fine. I use Pocket. I think Instapaper was around before Pocket, but yeah, it was Pocket. Uh-huh. Pocket almost became more popular. I would say probably because it's free. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I used Pocket back in the day, all the time, like back in my uh, speech and debate days to gather articles and stuff. Pocket was awesome. Yeah, I don't ever read it in line, but I use it to just store links. I would be fine if it just held a list of links that I could click on. I but. wish it would do that instead of what it actually does. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, yeah. we should make we should make this app. You want, you want to make that? Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Um cool. I'll I'll help you write the API. That's what cool. I've been doing lately. Nice. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to talk about that later. <laughs> so So the real story about Marco this week is something indeed. that happened with iOS nine. Now as you might so have heard, I was... iOS nine came out and there's a new feature. What is the feature? Uh, Content blockers. That's right. Ad blockers, tracker blockers, blockers on blockers on blockers. Beta blockers. Blocker. <laughs> I hardly know her. Exactly. No. <laughs> um, 
So Mar- Marco released this uh, this uh, content blocker that he had built with the folks behind Ghostry, um, which is uh, basically they have this nice big database of things that you might want to block. Um, Everything. And Marco's, yeah, Marco's been talking a lot with those folks about how awesome that he finds their browser desktop browser add-on for Safari. I just recently downloaded it because I'm a sheep, um, and I really like it. I you know, went to The Verge and iMore and all those sites, and I'm like, wow, hey, there is a lot of stuff that's tracking me here. Um, so it's kind of, I as soon as I saw this, I was like, hey, that's way cool, way logical, um, nice of Marco to bring this to the iOS realm. Um, but then things quickly got weird. Um, Daring Fireball's uh, John Gruber, who you might know as John Gruber, um, had <laughs> tweeted to Marco, or not really tweeted, basically subtweeted Marco, saying, um, I don't know why you block ads from the deck, which is uh, the basically an ad provider that most uh, of those hipster Apple folks, including Syracuse and, no, not Syracuse, um, I thought Syracuse, but I think it's only really like Daring Fireball. Um, it's only the people who write. Marco.org. Yeah, right, because Syracuse is... I don't think he even has any ads on hypercritical. But no. Yeah. So folks like that use it. Um, and they're really, their trademark is that it's just like really simple, you know, one image and one piece of text. Yep. None of that silly trackery stuff that you get everywhere else or exactly. the scroll jacking silliness that you get on iMore. Um, it's literally just a picture in a line. Mm-hmm. And uh, Gruber was kind of like, why, why did you do that, Marco? Except he didn't use his name because subtweeting. Right. Um, you know, I don't. I don't know why anyone in their in their right mind would block ads from the deck because the deck is good people. Well, I um, think even I think. Um, I mean, I understand why because. Um, so Gruber is arguing that if you're going to block ads, block them all. Yeah. Or don't block them. Um, exactly. But then uh, Gruber went on to argue after that. Well, we really shouldn't block all of them. We should block the things that are garbage. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely more with original Marco and less with. Um, with Gruber on um, on this one, um, but it's it's definitely an interesting perspective. So, so then, what happened here? Why? What? What's going on with Marco? So Marco ended up pulling Peace, so his content blocker from the App Store, um, and wrote this nice long post entitled "Just Doesn't Feel Good," um, because Marco didn't want to be like the arbiter of what to block and what not to block, um, which is interesting, but. It, it really kind of indicates that the, the Grubery logic kind of won over because um, because of what some people are referring to as like Flappy Bird Syndrome. Peace became like number one on the on the app store for paid and, uh, you know, pretty high up on the top grossing list. So it was making, you know, pretty substantial sum of money. But he was just totally um, unhappy with the kind of feedback that he was getting. from gave him too much customer. power. Yeah, too much and, power. Um, I... I well, I saw when I was nine came out. Marco tweeted about this. I'm like, whoa, Marco made an ad block. Cool. I had bought it right away. And Ghostery seems like the best source for this. And then, you know, the day or two later, it was pulled down. I saw his post, uh, kind of replying to John Gruber, and I saw Gruber's tweet as well. But I didn't think too much of it. And then it was down. And yeah, I guess it, especially, I think what it really was as being number one. If it was just a small app that didn't get a ton of views or anything, I don't think it would have been as big of a deal. But since so many people were obviously using it, it was too much. And I think Mark ultimately did the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes sense. I'm going to keep using peace because I love it, but uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use it until it ceases to function and I'll probably keep using it after then because I won't notice, but it's, yeah, I think me too. It it's it does a really good job and oh my gosh it makes the verge usable. <laughs> <laughs> oh burn hi yeah. Neilai how you doing? Yeah. I, so I don't I don't use Safari a ton. I use I search in DuckDuckGo mm-hmm. every so often, but that's about it. Otherwise, I just use Tweetbot's uh, inline thing, which yeah. hopefully uses for a view controller. Yeah. With Tweetbot four, which is coming eventually soon. Oh, I can't wait! It's going to be unified too, so I can use it on my iPad finally. Wait. Finally, iOS seven style tweetbot. It's ridiculous. Yeah. How it's. I mean, I guess they were building a. I don't know. Yeah. Got caught up. Yeah, it happens. Life happens. So I'll what, give them my money. It'll so what, what do you $10. think about the quick, like two to three day turnaround here? 
Um, like I'm sure Marco discussed it privately with some of his friends or something, and uh, I I find it interesting that he got um you know out of it just as fast as he went in. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. It's it's an interesting decision, but I think it's got to be kind of like Brian said. It's it's the fact that it was kind of meteoric. He had no idea that it would be so. Um, so darn popular when you know like even even overcast it it it, it with what pieces kind of meteoric rise really illustrated is that there's it was something other than just mark you know marco armit released a new app it was like he was like starting a war right you know i, I think that's a, a, a yeah. metaphor that people used in a i'm sure he doesn't want to start wars yeah and i think that's probably the quickest thing that he that made him get out of it Right. You could you could feel that if uh, uh, if more people bought it than you know that those first three day people, like uh, you know all of the site content creators would say, oh well, we're gonna blame peace now. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And Marco would be like, I don't, I don't want to be there. <laughs> That's not my thing. Uh, you might say peace, not war. Indeed. <laughs> so I'll just say on the iOS charts right now, Crystal the ad blocker is number one, mm-hmm. followed by Minecraft and then Purify blocker. So. Yeah. Still up there. So, so is Apple doing any promotion of that stuff, or is it just people nope. are just I, going there and finding it? It's literally just people. People are realizing that these content blockers are out there and they want in. Is it, what I the way I've been reading it. I don't I think, think there's going to be in the media. Is there is yeah. there going to be like is there ever like a um, like a breakdown of downloads for apps? I don't I don't do app store stuff. Uh, uh, there are guesses, so. but no solid numbers except okay. from the developers. So. Okay. Yeah. Because that'd be interesting to see, like, how many people are actually downloading it who aren't, you know, us, like yeah. non-tech people or our normal people downloading these ad blockers. Yeah, I, I mean, Marco did say that people were saying, "Oh, he probably has like a million dollars now from this after pulling it," and Marco said. And it is far less than what you might think. Yeah. Um. He so posted. I a- imagine maybe. He, 10 posted, or 20, 000, he posted a picture, uh, which would be impossible for me to find in my timeline. Yeah. Um, but the picture was of the the dashboard thing for returns. Oh yeah, I found it here. I'll give you a link. Um, well, when I figure out how to use links again, okay. So the picture says that he has negative twelve thousand dollars in sales. Aw. Yikes. There, there's your link there. I don't know how. Uh, uh, iTunes App Store returns go. Does it pull money out of the developer, or does it go from Apple? I assume Apple funds the money back and then takes the money from the developer. Cause yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yikes. I'm, a, I'm not going to return it. I want to keep it. In yeah. case he ever decides to open it again. Yeah. Probably won't, but you know, what if? Yeah, definitely. That's well, kind of where I'm at, too. So and the next I'm, one's going to be called either Instapiece or Overpiece. I'm so over peace. Yeah. <laughs> you see? Uh totally. That's too good. Yeah. <laughs> but just think about that. Six thousand returns, negative twelve thousand dollars. Um that's just for one day though, right? Yeah, it's just for the nineteenth. Okay, so which that's... was yesterday. Yeah. Yikes. Mm-hmm. Poor guy. Sort of. Rich guy, rather. Yeah, very very much so. Very, very rich guy who mm-hmm. lost a little bit of money. Oh, look at me. I just bought a $5,000 camera. <laughs> I, I hope my uh, I hope my $50,000, $60,000 BMW M5 will protect it sufficiently. Oh, I'm sure I, it will. I don't know. Because, you know, it, the, the engine noise doesn't come through, so we have to make audio tracks for it. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, too good. I saw an article today, or, like, just before we started recording this. Let me find the link. Mm-hmm. Um I retweeted some tweet. It was reviewing a, as a Tesla owner, reviewing a petrol-based car and how ridiculous it was. Gosh. I'll find the link and put it in the show notes. Every I, time, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Every time I see a Tesla on the road, and there is there is a Tesla driving around kind of uh, Washington Avenue, it, it kind of by the Guthrie there. Um, there is a Tesla that drives around there about every day. I see it every day as I go into work. And it never ceases to like fascinate me. I literally imagine that Elon Musk is in that Tesla because who else would like? I don't know who would. Have yeah, who who else here. would have that here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I don't I don't know a single person who makes enough money yes. that they can 
that they could. The CIO of the company they work for this summer had a Tesla. Really? That's That's amazing. Well, you know, just give it a few years. The $35,000 models will come out and everybody will have them. I I am very much planning on buying one of those. Okay, well, let me know when you get $35,000. I'll go for a ride with you. Yeah, right? If I... If if I out of college, if I make enough money that I can afford a thirty five thousand dollar car and wherever I then need to live, so that I could store it somewhere and the, and to pay the power bill. Yeah, it's not my first car, probably <laughs> not even second, but you know maybe someday, ten years from now. I yeah. don't know. Well, if you maybe, have, maybe not quite ten. Who knows? So, so what you can do to protect your Tesla, you know, from you know rogue. Uh, shopping carts or you know nicks on the door you can buy the six pack of amazon fire tablets to just tape to the doors <laughs> yeah just get some um, uh, gaff tape or duct tape yeah yeah couple of fire cat tablets yeah yep. oh totally <laughs> that that that's i think that's probably the best possible use for those fire tablets though at this like, point yeah pretty much pretty much well, anyhow, this whole, cur- this whole kerfuffle over uh, ad blockers and content blockers has got me thinking about one other thing. So as I mentioned, I installed Ghostery, uh, again, because I'm a sheep and I'll do anything Marco tells me. Um, and as a result, I, I opened up a couple of pages. Uh, the most entertaining one for me was The Verge and other Vox Media properties. No. Uh, they've got something in the neighborhood of 11 different trackers there. And it's just like really eye-opening to me to see all of the different things, all the different, like, third-party scripts that are running on my um, on my browser every time I run it. And I, I've never ran an ad blocker before because I've always just used Safari and been like, Safari is acceptable for that. Um, but Ghostery seems to be doing a really good job of catching all those things and letting me turn them off granularly. Um, so I don't make uh, Ken Fisher over at Ars Technica angry. I have, of course, whitelisted Ars Technica and a couple other ones. Um, but uh, other than that, it's basically, yeah, every, everything's gone, even Google Analytics which got me to thinking, um, what does this whole new kind of resurgence of content blockers mean for analytics? And now I like five people total visit my site on any given month. Um, and so the same, I've, I've basically dealt with the same old, same old um, refer span that I've had to manage since like the time I started to run a website. Do you want to see some quality refer spam? Oh, yeah. There you go. Look at that link and just bask in the glory. (laughs) Qualitymarketzone.com. Getfreetrafficnow.com. I've totally just given up on trying to stop it at this point. I just don't even care. Yeah. I mean, we don't get any any traffic here at the Nexus, but that's for reasons, um, such as making no content. But that refer spam (laughs) is so insidious that I don't even know what to do about it. Yeah, it's like when when you don't, when you're not even updating pages. Like uh, I've got a couple domains that I just tracked anyway for funsies, but I don't. I basically haven't touched them in six months to a year. Yeah, exactly. Um, and every last one of them gets at least a hundred visits per month from refer spam folks, and it's it's ridiculous. But the thing is, like Google Analytics seems like it's essentially the only game in town for. Um, for for what it does for like free yeah usage unless you want to be like facebook and rule your own i think that's the key key there free analytics yeah because you know there's there's all of the uh you know verge class trackers yeah. but uh exactly but then you're paying them for it yeah so would you guys ever use anything other than ga uh if it was free i would probably do it there used to be a tracker that was self-hosted i think it was called mint um mm-hmm. i don't yeah. know if it's still around but um, it was pretty good, I guess. Hey, guys, go to google.com slash analytics right now. Oh, no. Google.com. Yeah? Is it 404 for you? Because it is for me. If I could nope. type, it might work better. It's working for me just fine. What? But I wonder if that's... Is that is that the Denmark talking? It works for me. I'm gonna try curling from my uh, server and still works think, for me. I think I've got mine in EU in like an EU still still server. works for me. Uh, It'd be pretty funny if they just brought all analytics down. Like nobody's using right. it. It's over. We're done. We're done here. Time yeah, I'm, I'm curling it from terminal, and it's the 404 page. Uh, are you blocking it system wide? 
Huh. I have no idea what's going on. So I, I oh, just well. took a quick peek at my anime blog that I have not written for since high school. And it is getting over 60 views per day. Yeah. Nice. So, so you have a couple like a couple like uh, things in there that keep getting hit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, who knows why? Huh. Um. It's it's amusing that old content stays around for so long. Oh, totally. It's pretty hilarious. But I don't know. I've I've been kind of thinking about that recently because like one of the things that would be kind of interesting is to maybe alter. Uh, I'll alter the way that I'm like tracking views so that a I could try to ignore, try to remove that refer spam as much as I could and basically yep. just say if the refer is not Twitter I don't want to see it mm-hmm. <laughs> right uh, which I guess could could run the risk of like messing with my with my stats but my stats don't matter I'm not making business decisions based on right. my stats I'm just really interested um, so it'd be interesting to kind of try something like that and see what like if if there were a way to like for for folks like us to maybe do a little bit more of a quote unquote user respectful and helpful to us um, type of analytics, and that looks like maybe that's what Mint is kind of trying to do. Yeah, I don't know too much about it. It used to be a big bigger thing back in the early days. Um, yeah, thirty dollars per site, I think, is what they were charging. Yeah, um, you know, I don't know if it's still something that's relevant. It looks kind of dated, really, now. But I'm sure there yeah. are other you know, analytics packages that people have made that are more modern and stuff now that I just don't know about. Yeah. Yeah. This is right around. Okay. Well, I was also thinking, so this, this refer spam that I showed you in that screenshot. Yeah. So I don't know how refer spam works. I mean, presumably they're just attaching the refer tag or header to a request and spamming. Yeah. But what if we just all switch to HTTPS and if it isn't HTTPS, just drop it. Ooh. Because uh, HTTPS um, from regular doesn't bring referrers over, and I yeah. and I really doubt the referrer spammers want to go get a cert. <laughs> You're right. That's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. Um, I might need to try that. Yeah, I think I've got a weekend project now. Every weekend. That awesome. Every weekend till the end of time. Also, yeah. freezing as a preservative. I mean, I just I don't even know what these guys are trying to go for anymore. <laughs> Ghost spam is free from the politics. We are dancing like par- paralytics. Oh my god! I don't even know. Oh. I, I would log into Google Analytics and see what's going on with my site, but of course, it's, maybe it's working now. Hold on. Maybe we should do Google.dk/analytics. So, how did you get to the analytics page? Me? Yeah. Uh, I duck duck go to Google Analytics. Okay. And it was the first link. Okay, Say, official fine. site. But I was, yeah, I was uh, just wondering if it like didn't know how to get there or something. I don't know. But Google dot DK dot analytics worked. Oh well, there you go then. No, there's no com server in your area. Um, and of course, Google dot com analytics now works. So I don't know what's going on. Yeah, uh, temporary DNS failure. Something. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was Google. Google gave me a 404 page. Suspicious. So, okay. Mm. Let's see. Um. Brian M. Me, how? Where do I do the? Where's the referral thing? I don't know. I actually, uh, I don't. I, I don't ever use analytics, so I don't know. I'm gonna hop in quick and see if I can find it on mine. Huh? I think it's usually under um, like the acquisition. That's it. Acquisition, then all traffic, referrals. Where's acquisition? Oh wait, there we go. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah, all of mine is quality marketing zone, um, event tracking, get free traffic now. That's it. Um, my referrals are GitHub, hey, get back to dot work, and umn.edu. Nice. So I basically haven't done anything with my site and don't put it out there. Yeah, same here. So for my blog, I have most of it comes from my other old blog, DuckDuckGo, down Ryan, WordPress. And then in the number two spot, I've got get free traffic now. Oh yeah, how how do they find you, and do that? Who knows? I mean, it's probably just a bot, and it you know spiders you and then bots you. No, huh. you will be botted. I had I have all of ten visitors to my website this month. I got four. 
And I bet at least one is, or at least half are uh, web crawlers or something. Although yeah. Google probably doesn't count that, actually. I don't know. My site was down today. Is, it, is AWS up yet? Oh, yes. That, there was a big was AW, AWS outage. Everybody on Twitter was so complaining. many emails from Heroku log entries. It doesn't look like my site's up yet. Oh, I totally Maybe missed Heroku that. Maybe sleeping. I don't know. I totally missed that. I had no idea. I, I, well, that's a good question now, right? Because it's, it's Heroku. Mine's up now. Yeah. We're good. Okay. Oh, this is fascinating. Yeah, I had I had no idea. We Do you have uh, the free version of log entries on your um, website? Amazon Dynamo DB North Virginia went down, and saying it affected some websites for a or a limited amount of services for a limited amount of people. And isn't North Virginia? Isn't that? Isn't like that the east? Main... Yeah, yeah, US that's east. US East. Yep. Yeah, everything was out basically. Wow, even in Europe, apparently. Fascinating. Yeah, I had I had no idea. I didn't even notice. I guess I'm I'm using DigitalOcean to host my main site that I care about now. So excellent. That makes that makes more sense. Oh, hey, we should do the domain thing eventually because I got some more domains. Oh my gosh. Yep. I had one that expired early September. Ah, uh, which one? Um, iBride.me. I didn't. I uh, just redirected. I. I got it for free for a year and didn't do anything with it for the whole year. So, nice. uh, gotcha. <laughs> I go. Yeah. So I, I haven't done anything with mine either, um, but it's it's parallel with my Twitter username now. So it's Brandon Ooh, oh, that's nice. That is nice. Yeah. Yep. It was I've I've been going. How much was it? MN domain. I think it was thirty five dollars. Yeah, so that's a lot. It's it's yeah. a lot, but I I convinced myself that I needed to hop on that train before I before somebody else got it before the mayor of Brandon, Minnesota, because that's apparently actually a town, decides to send a city clerk after it. Is MN a, a state for like Minnesota, or is it an actual country thing? I think it's Mongolia, um, but I could be wrong. Okay. Um, I'm like, going there now, and it says, the domain name has been registered with Gandhi.net. It is currently being parked by the owner. That's me. Oh, now I'm going to do it. See who is on your domain. Yeah, so it's the TLD for Mongolia... Um, dot mn is yeah. So the who is hopefully should not have my home address on it because yeah, it's that's good. You know, <laughs> Ryan dot mn is available. Nice. Um, is Brian dot mn available? Can't find the server. Makes me think it's uh, Brian dot mn is available. So what? what I'm feeling is like I might have to find a man. No, oh, I don't want to. What am I going to do with that? Uh, everything. What if I move? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Well, uh, <laughs> clearly the, the, the solution is Ryan.space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Where can you buy a .mn domain? You can buy Gandhi. it in Gandhi. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. I'm on, I'm on Namecheap, and it just... Doesn't it has a dash next to it uh, saying not available? So G- Gandhi allows it, but it's not. It's like so Gandhi kind of a lot of their tools are very like like eighties ish, and that's that's okay, right? It's a lot of text file editing, which is fine, but it's not as nice as like Hover or Namecheap would be. I mean, I don't need a lot. I'm I'm pretty capable these days. Yeah, yeah, I vastly prefer Gandhi even though it doesn't help you as much with the configuration because it's a little bit cheaper than Hover and it will give you universal who is even on domains that Hover purports does not support I, it. I, I am sure everything is cheaper than Hover at this point. Yeah. Yeah. They, we're, we're like the one remaining podcast that Hover doesn't sponsor too. Yeah, and I think so my can... bad mouthing them is probably not going to help. Yeah. So we can we can we can real talk it. We can. We so can maybe talk. maybe we should just just get Gandhi as the sponsor then. Yeah. At this point, they'd be down. Their 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 slogan is no bullshit. I see that. that kind of like our nice. slogan. We have no we have candy. a slogan. <laughs> Thirty six pounds. Oh my god. Or euros. I'm in Europe, of course. Oh, for yeah. one year. That's a lot. I don't really want to pay that. Yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah. 
Guys, I could get Brian.website for 852 pounds per, <laughs> for a year. I could get my uh, Ryan. Dot, Ryan dot website for nine fifty. That sounds totally like Brian dot online for eleven thousand four hundred nine euros. Good lord! Oh my gosh! Ryan dot today for only twenty one seventeen. Now, now I've got to search my name. Oh like man! Look at what we've done. This is this is bad. Brandon dot io is definitely not available. Yep, there it went. It left. Uh, I can get Brandon dot net dot au. I kind of like this one. Ryan.news, only 15 Brandon.ski for $48. Yeah, Brandon.space is eighteen seventy three. Oh, they're they're doing these that are Latin characters. There's, like, non-Latin ones. Um, I'm putting this in Slack. I don't know how to say it or anything. But I could buy that for uh, oh, yeah. nine, 973 euros a year. I don't know how nice. you're going to be able to search that. The Unicode stuff. Oh my gosh! Try pasting that 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 whatever that is into your actual address bar, and it's it's a criminal offense. Mine says Safari can't find the server. D- can you see the the translated characters, or does no. it maintain um, Unicode? Oh, Brian dot X N dash dash Q nine J Y P four C. Yeah, that. <laughs> oh, that that's too fun. Yeah, those those nice. XC codes. Brandon.vc is available. Uh, Brandon.uk is available. Only $9. Oof. So when I move to London, that'll be ready for me. You know, there's a lot of great domain do... TLDs out there now, but yeah, so expensive. Brian. Uh, what is that? Durban. What is Durban? Just, I think it's a town somewhere. I could be wrong, though. Okay. Huh. Yeah, there's so many new ones now. Like, even more than when I was looking a year ago. So many more. It's only totally. going to get worse. Brandon.horse, $950. <laughs> wow. I, dot .red is still available. I remember seeing that a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the one that's like, um, like, red is like the Spanish word for, um, for, for net sometimes. So I think, the, and then eventually what happened is people are like, well, I want other colors too. And the, t- <laughs> the, typical, the typical fun domain name thing where people start using the abbreviation for things other than the abbreviation was intended for or assume that it was a different abbreviation because culture. How did um, I take yeah. Spanish for like 10 years and never know that? Oh, yeah. La, la, I, my accent is horrible, but like La Red Mundial or something like that. The, that is the amazing. Worldwide, the World Wide Web, yeah. Guys, I can get brand.no.com for 24 euros. Nice. Is it like no, like N-O or no, like you know? Like N-O.com. Like oh. Norway? Oh, Nor- Norway. Oh, like, okay. Just, Norway. You, know, you can use it for domain hacks or something. Yeah. Too good. Brandon, Brandon.estate, I'm not ready for that. Soon. Uh, I, need, I need to wait a little while before I get that one. You could be the fifth estate. <laughs> well, yeah. dot vodka is a TLD. Huh. Interesting. Yep. Well, I'm curious what to see. I'm curious to see what we're going to have in another... A couple of years, oh. but crazy oh, other, right? yeah, it's gonna be terrible. Oh my gosh, fifth dot estate is available. Oh, and I need to get that. Like, you should get that. That's insta purchase. How like, much is that? Thirty two dollars. Oh, that's not terrible. That's that's too much, but it's gonna somebody's gonna want it. <laughs> oh no, wait, wait, I did I did a typo, so nope, <laughs> it's not available. Aww. Ah, sad day. Instead, okay. Show show title is going to be one of the show titles is going to be um, nice. The way that I misspelled it. <laughs> Too good. Fifth estate. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, you you go to the real fifth estate, and it takes you to a, just a domain park page. Boo. Oh, I was um. I think I I had mentioned this to Ryan when we were recording last week. I don't know if you heard it or not, Brendan, but I had a friend who found the domain sin.tax. Yep, that's awesome. And then a couple days later, uh, Domain Shark had bought it up. No. But for a couple days, it was available and probably really cheap, too. Uh, The minimum bid for uh, Fifth Estate is $5,000. Ugh, not worth it. No. I mean, that would be exactly why I would buy it, too, but not worth it. Oh well. 
But what do you guys think? Is that about? Uh, is that about it? I for mean, us? we're only seventeen minutes over. That's not as bad as that like second episode or whatever it was. I mean, that that timer is sort of wrong now because we had sort of like a. Uh, an audio problem and apples and apples and apples and apples, <laughs> and apples, and apples. And apples. did it happen again do i have to restart the server again no there's just no drivers for linux oh your man. lack of drivers broke gosh that thing this is the your, worst your lack of drivers concerns me yeah. that is the second time it's happened <laughs> the first time it happened to uh brandon i don't remember what you were saying but yeah oh yeah. oh yeah okay yeah was, gonna say, was this the refrigerator one but that was just bad connection no, that might have been it too. No, I don't, I don't remember. Right. That was refrigerator, refrigerator, refrigerator. Something refrigerator. like the, that. Yeah, too good. It was pretty good. So, what do you, what do you guys got coming up here in the next week or two? Well, um, I have class this week. I have no class on Wednesday. Whoop, whoop. And I am going to Norway next weekend. Nice. Hey, next awesome. week. I'm leaving. I'm leaving Sunday afternoon, so I don't know if we'll be able to record. But Not a problem. We'll figure it out. A nice seventeen-hour ferry ride. It'll be great. Oh, you, you go by go by ferry. That's great. Boats. Yeah, I think it's seventeen hours. I don't know. I've also heard it's called a booze cruise, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, you know what's going to happen now. Yes, but oh, I, if I get up at seven a.m., I can go and see the fjords as we're going through it. Cool. So hey, that's awesome. I hope to take some cool pictures. Nice. Do it. We'll be watching the twitters. I well, I will be roaming, so we'll see how about how much data I feel like spending. It's about twenty eight cents yeah. per megabyte, so Oh mm. my gosh. Yeah, so we'll be watching the Twitters after, after you get back. Yeah. <laughs> that might be better. I'm hoping I will have Wi Fi at least once or twice a day. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. You got you know, gotta load Twitter, catch up, and then just save everything to pocket and then so go is that, Wi Fi Is that a part of the out. um exchange program trip or is that just because you know where yes. to go and stuff? Nice. It's an exchange program trip. That's cool. A long study tour for my sustainability class. That's nice. Brilliant. Yeah. Looking forward to it. As we will be looking forward to the tweets surrounding it after you get back. Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> so this tweet, week. Tweet. Yeah. So this week, or at least today, I'm going to continue to be drinking lots of soup and uh, and uh, tea and more soup and more tea uh, to get rid of whatever is preventing me from sounding like a normal human being. Uh, you don't sound very bad. I don't think. Really? Oh, maybe maybe it's maybe it's all in my head then. Maybe it's maybe it's feedback. <laughs> I don't really hear a difference, but maybe that's, it's just a weird connection too. That's good. I'm glad to hear it. I'm or or hear I'm used it. to worse sound quality coming from you. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> oh, I appreciate Ryan, it. Or, or, Ryan, when you said "oh," it it just broke. So it was like <laughs> straight auto tune. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, even better then. <laughs> T Pain style. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, but after that, I'll probably continue to uh, oscillate between purchasing and not purchasing a new Bluetooth keyboard. Nice. Uh, take a couple of classes um, and maybe put some fun stuff up on GitHub. I saw that uh, you were you, you found my dot files, Ryan. That was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I was just poking around. Yeah. I, I heard something about a touch to tap or tap to some, click. Yeah. Tap to click wizard. Yeah, that's and, me. And when I saw that file, it's like, wow, that's perfect. Yep, yep, that's me. That poor old Chromebook still works though. Um, so I'll probably, I'll probably be updating those dot files. I'm going to be, uh, I think I'm going to be reinstalling uh, Linux on my uh, home built computer. It's probably going to be Fedora this time around and it's probably going to use i3. So right now I'm actually running Ooh. Debian SID on it. But um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what's coming up for me. Lots nice. of classes, lots of rebuilding stuff. Yeah, How about I'm, you, I'm kind of the same way classes, boring stuff. And then in my copious free time i will be doing this Vue.js thing still um you know i'm kind of shifting away from uh doing everything with like old style forms you know you echo the form out to the page and the page yeah. does some stuff and you post back to the server uh, yeah. you know yeah i guess i'm slowly catching the uh terrible virus of making these um single page application things nice i mean mine isn't going to be completely single page it's going to be like multi-page application but you know, similar. Yeah. So I've been a I've been collection playing collection of single page applications. Exactly. So it's collectively <laughs> nice. singular multi page application. Nice, nice. And I, I've been doing this thing with Vue.js. Um it, it's it's very similar to Angular in a lot of ways. Um and you know, I was using React JS for a long time. Yeah. Um over in the summer and it's cool. But when I started looking at Vue.js and seeing how much less code 
I ended up yeah. having to write. It really made me much happier to not have to write that much code. And it also makes doing a lot of things, um, you know, in a uh, kind of restful API-ish kind of way much easier. Nice, nice, yeah. Um, there's also a book from Phil Sturgeon that I'm going to read sometime soon. It's, um, you know, How to Make APIs You Don't Hate. Yes, 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 I've heard amazing things about that book. Yeah, so it's um, $10 through a charity right now that he's hosting. It's a biking charity. Oh. Nice. Um, so I'll put a link nice. to that in the show notes. It's pretty cool. So I'll probably be getting that and read his book. Because um, I, th- I think I want to try doing that API approach. Nice. Thanks. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. Well, where can we find you on, well, on the interwebs? Keep looking at your tweets about Vue.js. I looked at the doc page a little bit, but I yeah. didn't get too far. <laughs> oh, you know, a funny thing about the Vue.js docs, and I don't know, I've never really seen it anywhere else on any other docs before. But there are ads on the docs. There's like one, you know, non-obtrusive singular image, kind of like a deck ad, yeah, right at the top of the view Vue.js docs, and it's like, eh, whatever, cool. Well, you know, you want to know where I found that most recently? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Oh, really? Yep. Huh. Same same company behind it, Carbon. Uh, they same sort of do- deck like ads. I'll show you right there. It's uh, it's something else. I my uh, one of my coworkers was commenting on that too. It was, it was pretty surreal. Yeah, maybe surreal. I imagined the ad. I don't know if I. I don't. I I just don't know anymore. They no, do ads that. via Carbon. Yeah. Awesome, at least. Yeah, I I, I I think it's pretty cool that you can just put a nice small ad, right there, out of the yeah. way. It's good. Yeah. If it if it. Ryan, makes what do you what do you put in ads on the Nexus? Um. So I have a no ad policy. Um. Uh, it, it, it's it's strictly based on if I have an ad blocker, I can't have ads in my properties. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just have to go con somebody into um, what would you call it, um, adventure capital or something. Yeah, know. isn't that basically what it is? Conning somebody into it? Yeah, basically. Yeah. You just, or you just have ads to other uh, podcast episodes. I mean, the only just ads pick one, pick one at random. <laughs> You just just all in you know insight podcast so like the nexus can or the podkit can link to control structure yeah exactly yeah. just all over yeah oh uh, yeah or you link to people's twitters or something like i think it'd be not, it i don't mind doing the live read ads but you know we're so informal here like we don't even know what we're doing half the time um <laughs> i i feel bad for the poor poor advertisers like oh yeah this is squarespace i hate squarespace oh squarespace so i mean it's, it's hard for me yeah makes sense makes sense but now the, the, got, now you've got me thinking about uh building uh, a software as a service platform that just creates fake ads based on you know ads but they're ads for other content on your site yeah on your site i guess most, I people, call that. That a rec- <laughs> most people call that a recommendation engine but this would be a recommendation engine with added snark with added snark <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. So it'd be like, if you like this, you might also like this exact same page that you're on. (laughs) (laughs) And then if you try to leave, and then if you try to leave, it'll it'll ask you, why didn't you like it? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And it'll load it with the, like, referral from thing in the URL so you can track your. your Oh, so we're going to make our own referral spam now, huh? Exactly. Referral spam ourselves and and all the. uh, (laughs) Yeah, and we wouldn't enable cores either. Of it, course not. No, no cores. So, so it's just gonna be JavaScript errors, errors everywhere. Oh everywhere. my gosh! Let's Left not do right. that. <laughs> Whew. Oh, nightmares already. <laughs> Too dang good. Yep. So where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me uh, over on the Twitter sphere at uh, Brandon underscore MN, uh, as in Minnesota. Um, where I will be tweeting lots of tweets about Twittery things, occasionally GitHub projects. I'm going to plug the GitHub project thing one more time because there's a GitHub project that I really want to do and I want you guys to ask me about next week if I haven't done it because I probably won't do it, but I really want to do it. And that's about it for me. Cool. You can find me on Twitter at bman4789 or at tech4789. Uh, one has a lot more to do with tech and one does not. So the Brian. The one that has your name in it is the one that has tech in it, right? Or is it the one that has tech in it? I don't know. You're going to have to go find out. I don't really remember. Yeah, I mean, The lines are blurred. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I kind of want to consolidate them again, but I think... No, keep them separate. I would have so many friends of mine mass unfollowing me and complaining. So, I don't know if that'll happen. Yeah. Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at RyanMR, where I'm fast approaching 17,000 tweets. And, of course, you can find me on the Google+, Plus, which is where I post pictures of old apps I discover on my Nexus 7 that I have not charged in many months. Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw that uh, tweet counter tweet. Reply yeah, you it's coming soon. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. I don't even know when I, I just tweet and I don't even think about it anymore. 17,000 like, tweets. Isn't that insane? 17,000. I'm only at 12.6. You know, I don't and, know how that happened. And it's not like I'm like, oh, I ate a sandwich. Yeah. It had meatballs. No, I am usually tweeting, you know, usefulish things. Yeah. And what it is is our conversations that somehow, like, yeah, I think it's been a while since we've had a super long one, but I remember but it happened. last it's time summer, last year, yeah. like, like, oh, 100, 100 replies in a day. Yeah. Oh, another 50 the next day. See, those are the best. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I think I have, another... I have 7,300 on my tech account, which is from uh, March of 2012. And mm-hmm. uh, my other one, I have 12,000. So altogether, I have you beat Ryan. Ha. Nice. You'll yeah. Catch up though. I'm. I'm. I probably won't. I'm at a, a grand total of twelve point six thousand. That's it. I don't know. I don't know why. I thought I tweeted so much, but I when did I you don't. get Twitter? Uh, you? October oh eight. So. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I think you were earlier I'm, than me. Then. Yeah, I was February oh nine. I was June oh nine. Yeah. Then March twelve. But. I hopped on it back back in the back in the very early days. Very very early. Well, my, my my delay for the Twitter was I didn't have a phone for a very long time. Yeah, and so I just didn't like you know, like you don't tweet without a phone. Yeah, I probably used Twitter. I probably you know maybe a couple hundred tweets in the first year at most. Yeah, and then I got my phone, and then psh, I remember thinking, "Holy crap, I'm using Twitter so much." Yep. You know, it's not I'm, like I would be able to find out what my first tweet was because why would Twitter want you to know that? Go to your. Uh, your Twitter archive. Yeah, there's a there's a thing for it. I think there's a you there's can down you can, you can download there. the archive. Yeah, that's what you do. But you you can have the links in there, so you can find the live version. Of it right. Still. Yeah. Once you get the archive downloaded, I requested it once, but they never gave it to me because they suck. Hey Ryan, I, I did it heard. once for my tech account, and I pinned my first tweet as my pinned tweet. Nice. So if you were curious, it's I think it's like have no fear at B Man Four Seventy Nine is here or something like that. Maybe oh, I don't remember yes. what account it's on, but it's something like that. Oh, is this this nice. the first tweet finder? That's funny. Yep. Yep. So, I found... so do you know what Plurk is? Plurk? No, I don't know Plurk. So Plurk was a Twitter alternative, and I was using Plurk beforehand. Ooh. Hipster from way back when. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice. February fifth, two thousand nine. Oh yeah. Man, that's funny. Mine's from 5 October 2008, and it is probably the worst tweet I've ever tweeted. New MacBook on October 14. Working on school stuff. In one tweet. Yeah, well, that's such that's how elegant, Twitter goes. Such an eloquent uh, 12-year-old. Yeah, too fun. Yep. Hey, did we lose Did we lose Brian? I think we kind of lost Brian. Oh, I missed that guy. Well, I think that's all for the show this week. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk more about it in the Fringe. Hey, he's back. We will talk more about it in the fringe. You're right. Um, so I guess uh, have a good I'm one. Back. I'm back. Sorry. Say goodbye to all your fans. Bye, Bye everybody. Fans. Bye. See y'all on the flip side. Thanks for listening to Podkit. For more, listen to The Fringe and listen to the next episode, too. And apples and apples and apples and apples and apples and apples and apples. And apples and apples and apples and apples.